my vacation is over, which means I am back in India, back in the summer heat of New Delhi, dealing with jet lag, trying to get caught up with work and all of that good stuff. However, because I was on holiday in the United States, the land where Amazon Marketplace and eBay and used comic book stores work the way that they should, I have come back laden with a whole bunch of goodies. I shared some of these new acquisitions with you in my last couple of videos, a handful of them in my visit to the independent comic book store, the book table video, and a larger selection in my most recent uh, reads and new acquisitions video. There are yet others that are going to be the focus of upcoming episodes, but the one acquisition that I am the most curious about myself, a very uncharacteristic purchase in many ways, is this box set of Nine Tintin Adventures. They're in the original black and white with the original drawings. These are the original versions in the original French. This box set contains nine hardcover facsimile editions, tiny in size, in French, of the first nine adventures that were originally published in black and white by Hergé. Now, the reason I say this is an uncharacteristic purchase is for a couple of reasons, so a couple of reasons why I almost didn't purchase this. But as regular viewers of this channel will know, I am a big fan of Tintin. So I came up with a couple of other reasons to override my original reasons not to buy this set. Perhaps the main reason I thought I shouldn't buy this box set is because, as I mentioned, it's in French and I don't read French. Now, of course, I know there's an entire universe of non-English comics out there, and I do try to read as much of those as I can, but I always do so in English translations. I'm, of course, not counting wordless comics with no written language. It doesn't really matter. If a comic contains both text and image, I do want to get the full picture. I want to simultaneously get language as well as art in order to get the full effect of the comic. And that's why I've never opened that Pandora's box of buying comics not in English. The second reason for me not to buy this box set was, well, really, the size. These are tiny hardcovers and I was wondering if there would be enough value in getting those large European albums shrunken down to this size. If you watched my Battle of the Box Sets Tintin video, you know that the one thing I didn't like about those uh, complete Tintin collections was the fact that they were smaller, which makes appreciating the art and reading the text harder. So if I didn't like those red and blue box sets for primarily the size reason, how could I possibly enjoy something that was even smaller? And the third reason I could give myself for not picking up this nine book set is I actually own five of them. That is to say, in the original black and white facsimile form, but in English, full album sized, I do have Tintin in the Congo, Tintin in America, Cigars of the Pharaoh, and the Blue Lotus. And Tintin in the Land of the Soviets has only ever been published in its original form. And I do have facsimile editions of older versions, although not the original black and white versions of The Black Island and King Autocar Scepter. But the problem is, outside of the five facsimile editions in English that I do own of the original black and whites, the others I don't think have ever been made in English or are certainly not available or visible anywhere that I can find them. I have in the past uh, flirted with the idea of just buying those in French just to see those original editions. But again, as I don't speak French, I've always waffled a little bit. And that's why I finally capitulated when I saw this set. If there is ever going to be a series that I buy in a language I cannot read, it's going to be Tintin. I'm so familiar with this series. I've read each of the volumes in it so many times. I have memorized the panels. I know the dialogue that's spoken. It seems to be uh, the least amount of handicap I could have when reading in a language I'm not familiar with. In any case, I don't think French is as difficult to follow if you know English as other languages like maybe Japanese would be. Uh, absolutely impossible. And if I am going to buy a French edition, might as well make it something fun and playful and a little different from the albums that I already have. Another mitigating factor I was able to come up with for myself is that these are facsimiles of obviously the original 128 or 132 or 136 pages editions, not the 60-something page stories that they were later shortened to. Which means that in many instances, the same number of panels as the shorter version was spread over more pages. I showed a little bit of this in my Tintin in America edition comparison, where two pages would be taking up the same number of panels that were later crammed into one page. Which meant, in my rationale, that I was still getting more space on these small pages than I would be of the newer editions in the other smaller editions, if that makes any sense. And the original 
original lettering in all of these is in all caps, not in capitals and lowercase the way the modern editions are, which means again, a shrunken size doesn't affect readability in quite the same way. Coupled with the fact that they are obviously all in black and white and high contrast, it just meant that reading these is not ironically as difficult as reading slightly larger editions of the modern colored versions were, at least to my eye. And that was all the justification I needed to pick up what looked like an absolutely adorable little box set with very handsome volumes in a nifty little package that we can take a closer look at right now. The most instantly appealing thing about this box set for me is this design where it takes a long view, uh, giving you one panel from Tintin in America, Hergé Tintin in black and white from Casterman, and you open it to reveal the books laid out this way. So this switch from the lengthwise to the breadthwise is quite pleasing for me. The box itself is quite solid with thick walls that come along with the top lid to keep everything quite secure and the bottom layer holds the books in place. It's slightly indented on three sides, which gives it a lovely book-like appearance and allows it to masquerade as a thin book quite easily on a shelf. Everything on the spine, not just the lettering, but the art itself is embossed, which is quite pleasing to the touch, as is Hergé Tintin and a Noir et Blanc. Now that I'm looking really closely, I can see that the frontispiece is a pasted on piece of paper, unlike the rest of it, which is embossed on the box. Opening the box, we find that the thick spine moves up and down for best fit, and the insides of the box contain photo-negative sort of illustrations from the Tintin in series. True to the nature of the set, these are all the original style drawings from the first nine adventures. Right at the top we have the first three books, Tintin in the Land of the Soviets, Tintin in the Congo, and Tintin in America. Then we have the next three and the final three underneath them. The set also had these uh, cardboard dividers between the books that I have taken out but are a nice touch for preservation and storage. Each volume has a lovely red cloth spine, feels fantastically bound, and is really beautifully printed. The pages look pure white to me. I really love the original yellow cover design being preserved with these panels in the middle. Although preceding this box set, it really unifies these nine volumes in a very unique way. The colors on the cover also look beautiful. Turning these pages, I feel these are really easy to read. The fact that you can hold them in one hand, and I can clearly make out these words, not that I know what they mean. Now, these are the five that I already own, and it's really these four that I've gotten this box set for, alongside the handsome production. Here's the broken ear which I've never seen in the original form. The Black Island, which I have two different editions of, which I've done an edition comparison video, but this is an earlier still version of it. It'll be interesting to see if there's a third level of difference. King Otokar's Scepter, which honestly in my facsimile seems like a color difference only. So this will be another one in which I'll try to spot significant variations. And finally, the Crab with Golden Claws, which I've never seen in any form other than the modern colorized version I grew up with. It's really interesting for me to see these in black and white, even thumbing through right now, this has a completely different feel from the yellow and blue saturated uh, crab with golden claws I know. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to root through these in comparison with the copies I have. It all packs away really conveniently and neatly, closes firm and secure, and is really a delight to handle both in this box form as well as the individual books. This is just a quick overview, really more like an unboxing in which you shared me going through this in detail for the first time. I'm pretty sure I'd like to do a closer edition comparison like the ones I've done before, particularly of the Black Island now that I have the absolute original one and King Autogar Scepter, which I've never seen in original form before this. Let me know if you'd be interested in those or anything else related to this box set. Also feel free to let me know if if you think I made the right decision picking up something so unusual or if I should have saved my money for something else. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.